Hi boys and girls and welcome to Faith Flight School. I'm Captain Tyler. Here at Faith Flight School we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. When we're doers of God's Word and what He shows us to do, we will receive all the benefits and all the blessings that God has for us. Last time here at Faith Flight School, we talked about fear and how fear can keep you from following the Good Shepherd. But we also learned we don't have to be afraid because our Good Shepherd is good. And when we follow Him, we follow Him to a good place of peace that's light and easy. Well, today we're going to look at some things that can keep us or hinder us from hearing the Good Shepherd's voice. Things that might uh, get in our way. Are you ready? Let's head to the hangar for some praise and worship.
Hello, kids. What time is it? It is offering time, and we love offering time. And just like we worship the Lord with our song and singing, we're going to worship the Lord with our offering and giving. So I want to start off by opening the word to Psalms 112. It's right in the middle of your Bible. Are you ready? We're going to start at verse 1. And it says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. So let's look a little deeper at these verses. So who's blessed? Well, those who fear the Lord. And what does fear mean? Well, it means honor, respect. That's what fear is. And it says, who delights in his commandments? Well, that means that we have joy, delight, joy in obeying him. And then his descendants will be mighty on earth and we will be blessed. Well, how will we be blessed? It says, with wealth and riches in his house. God wants us to have things, not just for ourselves, but have things for others too, to be a blessing to others. If you look further down in verse 5, it says, A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. And in the easy-to-read version, it says, It is good for people to be kind and generous and to be fair in business. So again, when we have things, it's really important that we listen to God, the Holy Spirit, on what to do with them. We don't just do whatever we want with them. We have to look at those things, to look to God and to find out, how can I use this to be a blessing to others? You know, we've got a few things here. We've got a hammer. We've got a screwdriver. We've got some money. These are tools. So how can these tools be a blessing to somebody. Well, a hammer, you can build something. You could build a birdhouse and you could give it to your neighbor, maybe a friend. A screwdriver, well, well, what does a screwdriver do? Well, it tightens screws. So maybe you could tighten the screws on a bike for somebody if it's loose or fix something. Now, what's this? Money. You know, money is a tool. So how can this money be used as a tool. Well, you could buy something for somebody that they want or maybe need, or maybe it's just for lunch. You could give it to them and bless them with it. You know, when we use the tools that God has given us to help others, it shows those the love of God. It shows God also how much we love Him and honor the things that He gives us by blessing others, but it shows others how much God loves them too. So it's really important when we have things that we look inside and find out how can we use it to be a blessing to others. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the biggest, the best, and the tastiest portions. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Grandpa, what are we going to do with the sheep today? Well, Emily, we get to do something extra special today. <gasps> really? What is it, Grandpa? Well, today, we get to shear the sheep. Wow! Yeah. Uh, wait, what's a shear? <laughs> well, in this case, shearing a sheep means shaving off its wool. Hmm. It's real no, important. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, Emily, you just go on and eat your waffles, and when you're through, Grandpa here will take you out to the barn and show you what it all means. Yep, looking forward to it. Well, these are called shearing tools. Hmm, what are shearing tools? Mm, they're what we use to give sheep haircuts. <laughs> well, then why didn't you just say a haircut? <laughs> well, it does sound kind of funny, huh? Well, sheep don't really have hair. They have wool. So when we cut wool, it's called shearing. Sheep. 
No, it just feels like a haircut. The same as it does when you and I get a haircut. Well, what happens with the wool? Well, we sell it. Wool is woven into cloth to make clothes like sweaters and jackets, or scarves and hats. Like the sweater that Grandma made for me at Christmas time. Exactly. Emily, if they have too much wool, they can get too hot in the summer, and if the wool gets too long, it drags in the dirt. Then they get sores on their bellies. Wool can grow so long, it's bulky, and they can't move like they need to move. Oh, that makes sense. All done. Now watch. I'll let her go. He, she likes it. She's jumping around like it's her birthday. That's right, Emily. She just got rid of all that heavy weight, and now she feels like a brand new sheep. She's jumping around all excited because she hasn't been able to do that for a long time. I like sheep shearing day, Grandpa. Me too, Emily. Why don't you go grab Clyde and walk him over here? You know, good shepherds shear their sheep because it's good for them. It helps them move more freely and feel better, and it takes away all the old, dirty, muddy parts that weigh them down. Here he is, Grandpa. Oh, thank you, Emily. You know, Grandpa, that sounds like my good shepherd. He takes all the dirty, heavy, muddy parts and shears them off so I can jump around, just like Dolly did. That's right. God loves us so much and wants the very best things for us. He shears off all the old stuff and we have new again in him. He restores us. Look at Clyde here. See all those matted knots on his belly? If they would just stay there, they can turn into sores. But if I take them off with these shears, shave off the bad, those spots are gone. And he'll be brand new. You're exactly right. Our good shepherd restores us on the inside. We're like brand new. He loves us so much, he restores our soul. God is so good. He doesn't even make us go to the shearing station to get a haircut. Okay, boys and girls, it's time for confession. So repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, go ahead and stand up for this next part and let's do this together. I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm bright, I'm good looking, I'm very rich and a major blessing. And I'm a doer, I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the Word of God. Now, go ahead, get your manual out, hold it up like this. This is my Bible. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Guys, wait up. Uh, Guys. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> excuse Little me. Little girl. Uh, sir, excuse me. Oh, oh wall. Oh. Walls are good. Um, pardon me? Sheep. Uh, excuse me. Sheep. Excuse me. Sheep. Hey, sheep. Hey, the green pastures are this way. Uh, what, what's up with this guy? Oh, that's one of my sheep. He's really far off from where I planned for him to be. So, uh, you're a shepherd? I'm the Good Shepherd, yeah. Oh, this is good news. So uh, you can take this this staff type thing you have, that yeah, shepherd, yeah. and, and it's called and, a crook. A crook. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, you know, put that around his neck and drag him off to where he needs to be. Oh. We're we're kind of recording here. We're ah, doing yeah, something. Okay. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, seems like well, a nice guy, but he's kind of in the way. Right. Well, I, I would do that, but uh, the thing is, I'm the Good Shepherd. I'm not a cowboy. You know, a cowboy drives the cattle. You know, uses a whip. You know, but, but I'm the good shepherd, and, and my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Oh, well, uh, okay, uh, you know, use your voice, lead them, and, and, and do your thing. 
Get him out of here. Well, I've been trying that, but he's got these earmuffs of rebellion on. So if you can't whip them or rope them or use your crook, then take off the earmuffs, take off the blinders. He can see you, he can hear you, problem solved. He'll be on your way. Well, see, the thing is, he chose to put those on. I can't just yank them off of there. If he chose to have them, he can have them. So if you can't force him to go and you can't take off the blinders and the, the earmuffs, He's stuck here? A little bit, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. But there's always hope, right? And, uh, and until he uh, kind of figures things out, there's mercy, mm. you know? Okay. Uh, so I, I can try some other things. Okay. okay. So, uh, uh, I'm willing to help. For a second. All right, here. Let's try this, this here. Sheep! Sheep! Hey, green pastures are the other way! Uh, sometimes, sometimes, I can get other people to help me contact him, right? Well, that's so, good news. There's there's kids out there. Oh. They can help us. Like a bunch of them? There's a bunch of them out there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. All right, everybody. On the count of three, we're all going to shout sheep, all right? Try to get his attention, all right? Okay, Ready? good deal. One, two, three. Sheep! sheep! I hear something. What was that? It's working. Yeah, it's working. there it is. All right, okay. Ready? One, two, three. Sheep! What are they saying? Hey, sheep! Sheep, you need to quit going your own way! Keep going my own way? No! You need to go the other way! You need to stop going your own way! Oh, stop going my own way! But I like going my own way. Or do I? No! It's actually been pretty hard. I keep running into little girls and walls. Uh. Actually, wow, I can hear way better without oh, this is those. good. This is good. Hey, hey, can you hear me better now? Shepard, I haven't heard your voice in a long time. I know, and it's good to hear from you too. All right, okay. Hey, the green pastures are back that way. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Ah, not, not this way. You led me into a wall. No, you, uh, you still can't see. It's back this way. Oh. No, that's not right either. No, sheep, you still can't see. Um, here, hold this again. All right, I need a. Uh, sometimes I have to do this. Yeah, let me help. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, uh, sheep, sheep, do you see a faint light in front of you somewhere? I see something. Yeah. Yes. This okay. Hey, I I have some answers for you. I have answers for you here. Oh, yeah, a book. Yeah. So um, many good things in here. Let me Where help. to start? If I could just help, let's turn it that way. There you go. Oh, I thought it was in the original Hebrew. I, uh, yeah, well now it's in English, sheep. What does it say? It says, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it says. I need help. Can you help me? Yeah, of, of course. I'm right here. There you go. Shepard! Hey! It's been so long since I've seen you. This is wonderful news. Yes, all right. Okay, hey, the, the pastures are back this way. You want to come and, and lay by the still waters? Yeah. All right, come on. Ba, ba. Boys and girls, this was a really fun skit but it's a very serious subject. The shepherd represents Jesus, and he's leading us, the sheep. And as we go about our day and we do things that are contrary to what he is leading us to do, we get blinders on our eyes, we get earmuffs on our ears. So we need to stay willing and obedient to follow the shepherd. And we need to listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to his word, read his word, and he will remove the blinders, he'll remove the earmuffs so that we can follow him. So remember, keep your heart turned towards the shepherd and follow his leading. Hello, boys and girls. We're going to continue hiding God's word in our heart so we can know and follow our good shepherd. Have you been practicing what you learned so far? Oh, good. 
Let's learn the next line. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Say it with me. Okay, ready? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The valley of the shadow of death could be a dark place or anything we might be afraid of. Why would we be able to fear no evil while being in that place? Do you know? Because our Good Shepherd is with us. He's the best protection we could ever have. Would you be afraid to go outside in the dark with your mom or your dad? No, you know your mom and your dad, they would protect you. Mom and dad may not be with you all the time, but there's great news. Your Good Shepherd is with us everywhere we go. The Good Shepherd, he never leaves us. And he always leads us to the safest place that we can be. Let me teach you the actions to the verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So we're going to walk all the way through because we're not going to stop. We're going to get to the other side. And I will fear no evil. So we're going to shake our head, no, we will not fear. For you are with me, so we're, he, we know he's with us. Okay, so now stand up and let's do that verse together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Okay, great. That was very good. Let's do the whole thing that we've learned. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Oh boy, that was very good. How exciting. We've been learning half the verse. You're doing so good. Remember, keep practicing. Hey kids, I have an illustration for you today. And this illustration is about the condition of your heart. Did you know that your heart has a condition? It does. You can see we have some things here, but I could use some help. Mr. William. I would like to help you. I would like you to help me. So we have some cornstarch here and some flour. So we're gonna put these in the bowl. If you wanna grab the cornstarch, I'll go, oh sorry, in the water. Okay, we're gonna put this in here. Corn like starch so. and water. Okay. okay. And now uh, what? so now we just mix that up. You know, we could probably use something. I don't have anything to mix this with. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that I uh, brought my spoon with me. <laughs> oh, a trusty spoon. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm just gonna stir this. You're just gonna stir that up. You're gonna okay. stir that up. Man, that's getting, that's, uh, Ooh. whoa, careful. I'm trying. All right. That's coming together nicely. I agree. Okay. While you're stirring that, we're going to open up our Bibles and read a verse. We're going to open up our Bibles to Matthew. And we're going to go to chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 28 through 30. And it says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, how's that going? It is, uh, it's kind of interesting. Oh, wow. That is interesting. Well, 
After reading that, did you catch what Jesus wants us to learn about him? Yeah, while I was stirring that, I kind of caught you say something like, gentle and lowly of heart. Yeah. Do you know what that means? Uh, I mean, I know what gentle means. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure on the lowly of heart. Well, he's saying gentle, humble, kind, and willing. Gentle, humble, kind, and willing. You know, when we're willing to hear from the Good Shepherd, it opens our heart so we can receive what he's saying to us. We have to be willing first in order to hear. So you have to have a willing heart. Okay. And it also says we have to be humble. Jesus was humble. And that means we don't have it all figured out, but we know the Good Shepherd does. Absolutely. So we can trust in what he tells us. So this kind of reminds it's a me mess. <laughs> it's a mess but it kind of reminds me in a good illustration of the condition of our heart and you're probably thinking how i am wondering how does that relate to the condition of my heart yeah well why don't you poke at that for a minute see what it feels just poke like it just poke it what happens when you poke it it's like it's like poking a brick wall look at that <laughs> and the harder you poke the harder it is. The harder it is. Okay. Now, what if... It's not even anything on my finger. Now try just placing your finger on it real softly and gently push. See what happens. Okay. Look What's at that. Happening? It just went straight through. It goes straight through, right? Look at that. <laughs> Did you know that that's a lot like our heart? We can have hard hearts or we can have soft hearts. Okay. Well, I kind of like this when it's soft. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, guess what? The Good Shepherd likes us to have a soft heart too. So that. how do you have a hard heart? Well, you have a hard heart when you're stubborn and unwilling. But when you are willing, willing to obey, willing to listen, it softens our heart. So when the Good Shepherd speaks to us, it doesn't bounce right off like a basketball doesn't solidify like that right it, it allows his softens. words allows his words to come in and sink in to our hearts so hard heart soft heart right so if we want a soft heart we have to be like Jesus and we have to be humble we have to be gentle we have to be kind and we have to be willing well, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus too. So I want to be humble, gentle, kind, and willing. Me too. Boys and girls, a little while ago, you just watched a skit where the sheep and the shepherd and I were portraying us, the sheep, and how sometimes the good shepherd is trying to talk to us and we can't hear him or we can't see him. And I want to just go over that a little bit. You know, the blinders come on our eyes as we go about our life and we continually ignore his word. Those earmuffs that you saw on the sheep's ears come on our ears, our spiritual ears, as we continually ignore the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you've never lived your life with those off. They've always been on. And so, I want to talk to you about making Jesus your good shepherd, which another way to think about it would be kind of like your boss, making him the ruler of your life and submitting to him and doing what he says to do in his word. So if you've never done that before, then I'm going to lead you in a prayer and just repeat after me and we're going to make Jesus your good shepherd if you want him to be. So, say this after me. Jesus, I'm willing to be your sheep and to make you my good shepherd. I confess my sins that I need you to forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again. And I will listen to you. I will follow you and I will submit to you all the days of my life. Now, if you've done that, then congratulations. 
because Jesus is your good shepherd. And I just ask that you find a Bible, talk to your parents, talk to grandparents, talk to somebody, and get yourself a Bible. And if you can't read, then have someone else read to you. And begin listening to what God said, because this is how you start to hear what He said and what His will is for your life. And you'll find that you'll follow the Good Shepherd and He'll lead you to green pastures. He'll lead you to still waters and He'll restore your soul. Now that was a good lesson. Today we talked about some things that can keep us from hearing the Good Shepherd's voice properly. One of those being unwilling or choosing not to do what He says. Those things can keep us from hearing the good things that our Good Shepherd wants to get to us. But, there's good news. It's easy to make a change. All we have to do is look inside and turn on the willing switch and say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing and I'll obey. And mean it in your heart. And he'll hear that prayer and you'll start hearing his voice clearer and clearer. And as you listen to him and as you obey and do what he's telling you to do, he'll lead you to a good place, like the green pastures where there'll be plenty to eat, plenty of protection, plenty of good things. So I encourage you this week, take time, get willing in your heart, be doers of the word of God, and you'll receive those benefits and those blessings that God has for you. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Captain Tyler, and I'll see you next time.